So there's this app on the App Store called UTMSC, and it's pretty cool. It lets you run like actual desktop operating systems on iPhone. Only problem is the SE stands for slow edition because you need a jailbroken iPhone to use the full power of it. Good thing this iPhone XS is. And using that jailbreak, we're going to see just how much we can push this phone with Windows, Linux, and maybe even Mac OS. Let's get started. Oh, wait, I got to I got to reside though that it wouldn't be an Apple product if you didn't have to do some stupid work around to make it work as intended. Allow accessory to connect. Oh yeah, I give you consent. I'll just watch from the corner. Now we just gotta fire up side loadly. And as soon as I started the app up, it just refreshed the app for me. All right, thank you. So we should be all good to continue, right? Yeah, okay, here we go. Hmm, I wonder if the jailbreak was applied. I wonder if UTM has a repository so we can just install it from Cilio. It says to use like the normal side loading stuff, but I don't wanna have to deal with refreshing it. So let's just paste this into Cilio and see if it works. After adding it, it works just fine. Using that, let's install UTM with the dependency. And we got 256 gigs on this iPhone XS and we could probably just load it up with everything. And after a minute, we got UTM installed. Let's take a look. Big fan of how this developer follows the Apple design language. Feels like they could have developed the app themselves. Virtualization is not supported on your system. Wait, why? It appears that's only an M1 iPad feature, so we should just be able to continue with JIT then. Now we only have 3 gigs of RAM on the iPhone XS, so let's just start out with Windows 7. Unfortunately, we have to go find our own Windows 7 ISO, so be right back in a sec. We now have the ISO installed, so let's set up our VM. Yeah, 2009 was when Windows 7 came out, so I guess we'll just go with this CPU option, and we'll make the memory uh, 1 gig, and we'll do, I guess, 2 CPU cores. The boot ISO image, let's pick the one we just grabbed. And we got a lot of storage to work with on this phone, so let's just give it 20 gigs. Looks like everything checks out. Let's try running it. This is the UEFI shell. Something isn't right here. It's probably because Windows 7 doesn't really support a UEFI boot, so let's turn this off. Now will it work? There we go. And I know JIT is working on this because when I tried this out on a UTM SC with the iPad Pro, we couldn't even boot into the Ubuntu installer, so big improvement. Now I'm not really looking forward to using Windows on this thing with a touchscreen, so let's get a keyboard and mouse hooked up. After doing that, Windows could not parse or process unattend answer file. What? After checking out this issue on GitHub, apparently we gotta untick install Windows 10 or higher and UEFI boot. We did UEFI boot, but Windows 10 or higher, we gotta redo everything all over again to untick it. See you in a few minutes. Redid the entire virtual machine configuration just for that one setting. Let's see if it'll work now. And perfect, we can now install Windows 7 on the iPhone. We're just gonna do a full installation without any upgrade, and yeah, there's the 20 gigs of allocated space we set aside. And now we just gotta wait for it to install, and hopefully it doesn't take too long, cause it is like virtualized on the iPhone, but we'll see. And after letting it sit for 15 minutes, Windows 7 is all installed. Now we just gotta set it up. Type a username. Isn't that original? Windows is finalizing your settings. And here we are, we're logging in. I wonder if it's gonna play the noise when we log in. So here we are, a full version of Windows 7 running just on an iPhone. Let's see what we can do with this. Maybe we can go online with this ancient version of Internet Explorer. Will the internet connection actually work on this thing? Yeah, the homepage won't work. Maybe the issue is this specific web page won't load. What if we tried Google.com? Same exact problem here, so maybe the issue is with Internet Explorer itself. Let's open Command Prompt and see if we can ping something. Hello? I just... Oh, wow. <laughs> that is slow. Ping Google.com. So we can hit up the internet on this. The only issue is that Internet Explorer just sucks. Now let's try to mount the Half-Life ISO file onto this thing and play the game. We'll click here, click on this, and yeah, we'll change this disk out for Half-Life Disk 1 ISO. There we go. Let's run the installer. This is made for like Windows 95 and 8. I, I hope it'll work on here. Oh yeah, user account control. This was super annoying in Vista, but by the time 7 came out, they fixed it up. Oh, dude, that is insanely loud. Why are you playing that? Did you hear the sound file? Oh, oh yeah, I heard it. Uh-huh. Welcome to the Half-Life setup program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just install the game. If there's one thing Windows does do right, it's actually backwards compatibility. You can tell this installer is ancient. The install is finished, and setup has placed the Sierra utilities in your start menu. Okay, thanks for the abandonware. Let's launch Half-Life and see how many frames we can get out of this. This program has known compatibility issues. Uh-oh, just run it anyways. Who cares? Did it just crash? Ooh, no, there you go. Half-Life is in the taskbar. Let's click on it. Please type in, oh, the CD key. Let me Google. I mean, I'd rather take this over the DRM in games nowadays. Let's take a look at our configuration real quick. We're running this game at 640 by 480, so let's see how well it performs inside the training stage. Now, before we continue, let's boost the system performance a bit by bumping it up to 1.5 gigs of RAM and forcing multi-core. And the performance is <laughs> just absolutely terrible. Look at this. With the command CL show FPS1, we could take a look at exactly what we're working with here, and it is, it's like 10 frames a second. Wow. I mean, in the game's defense, it is actually a stable 10 frames a second, but this isn't really fun to play the game at. 
Maybe we can get this to perform better if we run it under Direct 3D. Direct 3D is even worse. We're not even getting one frame a second here. That's the sound of Source games running well. All right, well, that's enough of Windows for now. Let's take a look at Linux. So for Linux, we're going to be using Fedora Sway. Now, Sway is actually a window manager, and it should give us a lot more performance compared to a desktop environment. And for the configuration, we'll obviously hit Linux, and we'll go with the same 64-bit processor. But this time, we're going to give it 2 gigs of RAM and use 3 CPU cores. Boot from this ISO, and we're going to give this one 60 gigs, because why not? If everything checks out. Let's hope this works and we don't run into a Linux moment. And right after I say it, Linux moment, yeah, display output is not active. Uh, can we like change the output maybe? Oh, never mind. After waiting a few seconds, we got this screen, but nothing seems to be happening. Guess I'll wait more. Oh, that's pretty cool. It's not a Linux moment. It's an iOS moment. The app might get killed soon because of memory limitations. Oh, and UTM crashed. Maybe we're asking too much out of it with like two gigs of RAM. All right, let's do 1.5 then. And after 1.5 gigs of RAM, we actually have a bootable instance here. <laughs> I just hit window key and D. Is, is it going to launch? Oh, oh no. Please don't quit again. Please do not quit again. Oh god, god damn it! Maybe we're going about this the wrong way. Instead, let's try out Debian and just install it without any desktop environment. Now we just gotta slap the Debian net installer in there and let's take a look. We could do the graphical install, but knowing Linux on this thing, it'll just crash immediately, so let's just go for the regular one. This system has relatively little free memory. Yeah, it's it's not really my choice. There's our 30 gig disk, install it to that, and now we just wait. And there we go, an actually usable version of Linux. Uh, not very pretty, but it works. Let's see how much resources we're using here. So we have like 700 megs of RAM, and Linux is only taking up 200 of that. Maybe we can install like an IDE or something? APT install Emacs? I mean, I don't know the first thing about programming, but if you're installing Linux in a VM, I'm assuming you need it for development. Now that we've finished installing, let's take a look. So if you need an all-in-one development environment, you got Emacs, which is like an IDE right here, and you can just run your code natively on the Linux container itself. Pretty cool. Let's use APT to install ScreenFetch so we can just show off our amazing specs we've got on this setup. There we go, and now that it's on our phone, we can go up to people in public and tell them we use Linux. Wait, it's Linux. Yeah, you guys don't go outside. Anyways, it's pretty cool to have this running on the iPhone, but I wish you could use a GUI on this thing. Next up, let's take a look at Mac OS X, and this is just going to be a complete pain in the ass to get running. We're searching on Reddit, and apparently this is a config that'll work for Mac OS 10.0. There's a bunch here, actually. All right, so we got our completely legally obtained DMG file right here, and now we just need to open the UTM file inside UTM. Oh, there it is. And then we click this, we hit browse, and we select our DMG. Please work. Okay, looking good so far. Oh, you know what? I see the little pinwheel in the corner. I'm used to that thing on Mac OS and man, do I hate it. And the installer actually boots without any issues. It, it was really that easy. This is only the installer, so I should hold off, but the performance isn't too bad either. Well, time to give the phone 30 minutes to install everything. And the installation just wrapped up, so hopefully we're now booting into a usable version of Mac OS X. Preparing installation, what? Oh, you know what? Yeah, we gotta remove the installation media and reboot again. Now will it work? Yeah, that's uh, that's definitely not a good symbol. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what error this is supposed to convey. Oh, okay, so we need to hit the top IDE drive and then move it down one section. Fingers crossed. Seems like that was the fix, and now we have Mac OS X running on the iPhone. Or you know what, actually, didn't it already do that? It didn't show me a setup video, so honestly, this is just completely unusable, huh? Jokes aside, though, the performance in the setup, it's, uh, it's not that good. It's been like 20 seconds since I hit continue. Yeah, it's now been five minutes and I'm getting impatient, so let's just reboot it and see if that fixes it. There we go, and that actually fixed it? Wasn't expecting that. Oh, cool, we're forced to register our operating system from 2001. All right. This is a good question. What best describes what you do? Uh, is Time Waster in here? I had no idea Apple pulled a Windows back in the day with the older Mac OS X setups. Finally, we actually get to set up our Unix account. Talking with Apple. It, can it actually still connect with Apple? Oh, no, the servers are down. And that's it. Enjoy your Apple computer. Don't worry, I'll try. Wow, and the performance actually isn't terrible. About this Mac, yeah, 256 gigs of memory, and it thinks we're running this on a PowerPC G4. Oh, here's a website. Let's see if Internet Explorer still works on this. It didn't on Windows. Oh, and if you're not up to speed, back in the early 2000s, Apple actually made a deal with Microsoft because they were nearing bankruptcy to put Internet Explorer inside Mac OS. And immediately a security error. I wonder if Action Retro's, like, Frog Find is going to work on this. Let's see if the domain frogfind.com is it. Yeah, that's it. Let's check out Mac OS X 
Uh oh, we're submitting a form which is not secure. The whole operating system isn't secure. And using Frog Find, we can actually somewhat browse the modern web on this thing. It's all text-based, but really what else is gonna run on this? Can we load the images though? No way. I wonder how well the magnification of the dock is gonna run. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's not smooth at all. A lot of the applications pre-installed on Mac OS X were actually carryovers from Next Step, which was actually like the evolution base for what Mac OS X became. Oh, that's pretty funny. They had preview on the original Mac OS X, and only just now, like some 24 years later, finally came to iOS. Wait, what's latebreakingnews.help? I, I have no idea what this file is. Help viewer. Oh, is it like a uh, like a system guide? Late breaking news. I mean, yeah, the name's not wrong. News about using Mac OS X. The, speci the specified HTML file could not be found. Okay, so it relies on like websites and they're all down today, huh? Maybe we can just do Mac help? Oh, okay, these work. What do I use the finder for? Oh, you can just like type in a question and it'll search for you? Oh, that's pretty cool. Here's a good question. How to make stock iOS not suck? Hmm, yeah, not finding anything related to that. Figures. So that's Mac OS X running on iOS as well. It's it's really cool to just revisit this old version because the Aqua design, it's, it's just so good, man. I, I like the scraps of it we're getting with liquid glass, but please just bring this back. And there you go, with JIT Compilation and UTM, we can make the big three desktop operating systems they actually run pretty decent on mobile. It is kind of a shame you can't do this on normal iOS without like weird hacky workarounds to enable JIT, because it really, it would just be cool to pull this out of your pocket and play with any operating system at any time. Linux is obviously the best if you want to run modern stuff on this, because you don't even need a desktop environment. You can just save resources and run everything from a terminal. But the other two, like Windows and Mac OS X, are just cool to play around with and run legacy software. Kind of makes me jealous, especially coming from Android because this is what you got on iOS and uh, this is uh, this is what you got on Android. No disrespect to the developers but the UI could definitely be better. Anyways, thanks for watching and let me know down in the comments what videos do you want to see from me next. Alright, I'll see you later.